Senator, thank you for taking some time out and joining us. I think first, uh, just because this has been recent news, uh, your reaction to uh, Special Counsel Mueller's speech yesterday, especially talking about if we had the confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. What does that say to you? Well, that speaks for itself. But the bottom line is, I believe, Mueller must testify uh, before the Judiciary Committee. And the members of that committee must ask him the hard questions. What is up in the air is, did Trump and his administration obstruct justice? And that's what we have to find out. That has empowered some of the push in the House for impeachment with some of the members. Uh, does this make the case more strongly to you that perhaps uh, Speaker Pelosi should consider it? Well, what I think is we should begin the process on that committee of an inquiry uh, into impeachment and see if there are impeachable grounds. But at the same time, while we must make sure that this president understands that he is not above the law, and that is a very important principle that has got to be dealt with. On the other hand, we cannot ignore the needs of the people of this country who are worried about the high cost of prescription drugs, who cannot afford to go to a doctor, or worried about climate change. So we've got to do two things. We've got to hold Trump accountable, and we have to address the real needs of the American people. Our governor just signed a bill that would restore voting rights to uh, convicted felons upon leaving prison once they've served their time. Even if they're on uh, parole or probation, they would still be allowed to vote. It's about 77,000 or so people here that would be affected by that. Uh, we know that you've shown support for incarcerated people to uh, retain the right to vote. Is this a state's rights issue? Should this be done state by state, or would you like to see something well, at the federal this, level? Well, I think this, first of all, I applaud the governor. All right, we have millions of people in this country who have done their time. They've been in jail, they paid their price to society, and when they leave, they have the right to vote. And this is something as president, uh, I will be very strong about. We saw our first veto and it had to do with uh, uh, essentially a bill that would have put us with the, na uh, the national popular vote, uh, that coalition. Um, do we need to go down that path of, of looking at the Electoral College and is the state-by-state -state model the way to do well, it? Well, I think, look, uh, it's a complicated issue. But I think at the bottom, at, at the end of the day, um, Donald Trump lost the popular vote by three million votes, okay? He is the President of the United States. Most of us believe that majority rules. And when you lose by three million votes, there is a lot of doubt as to why you should become President. So. This is an issue I think we've got to take a hard look at. Governor, uh, Republicans are, are quick to start adding up the costs of many of the proposals that you and, and some of the more pro progressive candidates are putting out there. What can you say to Nevadans about how their paychecks will be impacted? We know that you would like to see more taxes for millionaires, billionaires, corporations, but how about the everyday Nevadan? Oh, they'll be a lot better off. Look, I happen to believe that for Nevada, for Vermont, for all of America, health care is a human right. You want to save money? You do a Medicare for all single payer system, which every study out there has shown will save substantial sums of money. So people will have comprehensive health care, cost of prescription drugs will go significantly down and we save money. Now the insurance companies don't like it and the drug companies don't like it, but the American people do like it and that's what I will fight for. When we talk about saving money, we have got to ask ourselves how it happens that companies like Amazon, owned by the wealthiest person in this country, Amazon made $11 billion in profits last year. You know how much they paid in taxes? I'll tell you, zero. So we have this absurd situation where Trump gave a trillion and a half dollars in tax breaks to the top 1% and large corporations. That's absurd. What we need to do is invest in our infrastructure to create millions of good paying jobs as we rebuild our roads and our bridges and our water systems. And by the way, an issue of great concern to Nevada that we deal with climate change, which is an existential threat to this country and the entire world. You're here today to talk about immigration yep. and uh, your proposals. Uh, give me a little snippet of what you're gonna talk about. Well, you know, to me, this is a very personal issue. Uh, my father uh, came to this country at the age of 17 from Poland. Uh, he didn't speak English, he didn't have any money, uh, and he was a high school dropout. Just the kind of person that could not enter America today. So I think this is an issue that you know, I feel strongly about. And bottom line is we need comprehensive immigration reform. We have to stop demonizing undocumented people. 
We need to provide immediate legal status to the 1.8 million young people who are eligible for the DACA program. And we need a humane, a humane border policy for those who seek asylum. America must never be the country which snatches babies out of the arms of their mothers. And finally, uh, since we last spoke in 2016, this field is a bit more crowded. <laughs> uh, more progressives are running on the Democratic side. Uh, tell me about, does that concern you at all? Is that a step in the right direction? What, well, what does I think, it make look, it look like for you? Look, when I came to Nevada four years ago, and we did very, very well here, and I want to thank the people of Nevada for the support that they gave us four years ago. Uh, the ideas that I was talking about, raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, health care for all is a right, making public colleges and universities tuition free, demanding that the wealthy stop paying their fair share of taxes. Many of those ideas were seen to be kind of extreme ideas. Well, the American people over the last four years, I think the American people have changed their minds on a lot of these issues, and more or less than our mainstream, and that is a good thing. We need a government that represents all of us and not just wealthy campaign contributors. That's what my campaign is about. We're making progress. We're now building the largest grassroots volunteer uh, community, I think, in the history of American politics. We have over a million people who've already volunteered for our grassroots campaign. That's why I think we're going to win. Senator, I appreciate you taking some time, sir. Nice to be with you. Thank nice you. To see you.